South Africa. Okay, um, can everyone hear me? Is that fine? Um, okay, so I am from Cape Town, South Africa, and I will be presenting preliminary results of my master's research, which is looking at understanding the link between ENSO and drought over Southern Africa. Um, so why drought? So um, some of you might not know, but for the last two years, um, Southern Africa has actually been experiencing one of the worst droughts it's experienced in over 35 years. Um, so the map over there actually shows the, um, the rainfall, percentage rainfall from our rainy season last year. And as you can see, majority of the region received less than 65% of its normal rainfall. Um, and several of the countries have been declared disaster zones. Um, and then looking at the bottom middle image, um, that is actually uh, Cape Town's water supply currently, well, the before and after. Uh, we're sitting at about 10% of uh, capacity in our dams, and only 2% of that is actually usable. So we have an estimated 60 days left of water, so we're on severe water restrictions at the moment. Um, other impacts of drought, it's, uh, it impacts agriculture, and um, this results in economic losses as well as food shortages. And this is particularly uh, prominent in areas such as Southern Africa, which rely heavily on rain-fed agriculture as well as subsistence farming. Um, and like I've mentioned with our dams, uh, so long-term drought results in uh, water scarcity, which results in people seeking unsafe water sources, and that leads to the spread of waterborne diseases. So to put this into context a bit more, um, Southern Africa has a highly variable rainfall, ranging from the Namib Desert on the west coast to the more tropical kind of Mozambique side. So the north, um, northern, northeastern region receives the highest rainfall, whilst the south uh, western region receives the lowest rainfall amount. Uh, and we receive some, the majority of the region receives summer rainfall, which is our December, January, February period. Uh, the synoptic systems which bring about rainfall include the shifting of the um, ITCZ. Uh, there's a tropical temperate trough which lies across the continent. Um, Cut-off lows and um, mid-latitude cyclones affect the southwestern tip during the winter months. And then there's this um, Angolan Kalahari low pressure belt which lies across the um, west coast, um, bringing the little bit of rainfall which does fall in that region. So the influence of um, El Nino Southern Oscillation. So typically, an El Nino event will result in drought conditions. This is due to the shifting of the tropical temperate trough um, east of the continent uh, and a descending limb um, falling over the continent, creating a high pressure. Um, however, there is a northward shift of the mid-latitude cyclone track. Um, however, the storms are generally weaker, and all of that leads to generally drier conditions. On the other hand, La Nina results in wetter conditions, um, and this is due to the shifting of the tropical temperature trough um, over the continent again, and, um, and there being uh, convection in that region. And the mid-latitude cyclone track shifts southward again, but the storms are stronger. Um, however, there is high inter-El Nino variability, um, which has already been discussed. Um, so not all El Nino events result in drought, and not all La Nina events result in wet conditions. So uh, for my research, I am um, basing it off these uh, sea surface temperature anomalies um, identified by Johnson through self-organizing maps. Um, so Johnson focused on the Pacific Ocean and created these eight ENSO patterns. And then Hull um, ex uh, expanded that to include all three tropical oceans. Um, and that creates these eight patterns of ENSO. Uh, Hull then went on to explain the precipitation anomalies associated with each of the ENSO patterns over Southern Africa. Um, however, they only considered precipitation, and it has been shown that temperature also has a strong influence, and that comes into the um, Standardized Precipitation Evapotranspiration Index, um, SPEI. Um, so just to clarify, a negative SBI is drought and a positive is wetter conditions. So um, in the more tropical regions, such as Tanzania, 
um, it is seen that precipitation actually has the higher correlation to ENSO, uh, to the ENSO index. Um, but when you get to the more mid-latitude regions, that temperature actually seems to have the higher correlation to the ENSO index. And luckily, SPEI is kind of the best of both. Um, and then the other issue with that um, study is that they were using observed data and that only has a um, few observations per pattern, so the re result isn't particularly robust. So the aim of my research is to investigate the link um, between the different ENSO patterns and drought over Southern Africa using um, SPEEDY. Um, so I'm using SPEEDY to enable me to do multiple um, ensemble simulations to create a more robust result. So the f uh, steps are to evaluate SPEEDY. So I'm using the higher resolution of SPEEDY, the T63. Um, so the first step is to evaluate it and then um, to impose the SST patterns onto the model to see the influence of ENSO on drought, on the SBI. Um, Just to correct you, this version that you are using has the less the, the, the interactive vegetation yes, turned on? Yes, I'm sure, yeah. Um, so for this uh, study, I'm focusing mostly on the evaluation of SPEEDY. Um, so the setup, so like I mentioned, I'm using the T63 resolution of SPEEDY, and then I'm comparing that to the crew observed data, um, monthly uh, data. So um, the first step was to regrid the SPEEDY um, data, and then I evaluated uh, several climate variables for the DJF period from 1970 to 2010. Um, and yeah, I was looking at temperature and precipitation, moisture balance. And then, um, and then I looked at the capability um, uh, of Speedy to simulate the um, ENSO SBI patterns. Um, so going on to temperature. Uh, so I've got the crew observed data and then the Speedy simulation and then the bias and then uh, with the root mean square error and uh, then temporal correlation and then in brackets is the spatial correlation. Um, so generally, Speedy seems to have a warm bias over the majority of Southern Africa. Um, and um, particularly pointing out the region along the, um, the west coast, uh, which seems to have an influence on precipitation, which I'll get to. Um, so then looking at the moisture balance, um, unfortunately precipitation isn't too well simulated at this stage. Um, there seems to be a high potential evapotranspiration, um, which Speedy seems to be simulating. And again, that's particularly going on that west coast region, um, particularly over Angola in the northern uh, section. And this is probably resulting in the low moisture levels, which is uh, the lack of rainfall in that region. Um, but, yeah, so the evapotranspiration is, um, isn't too badly simulated except for that one region. Um, so that is the moisture balance. Um, then looking at SPEI, so Speedy does seem to, uh, so this is for the DJF period, so Speedy does seem to get the pattern of SPI, just not the, um, the range. It's not quite getting the extreme highs or lows. Um, and then when you look at the Taylor diagram, you can see that it really seems to be precipitation which is pulling the SPI value um, down. Then looking at the capability um, of Speedy to simulate the ENSO patterns, um, so for this, I chose, so these are the dates which were provided by Hull of each of the patterns. Um, and then I chose um, two years from each um, pattern, except for the first one, because my simulation just didn't go that far back. Um, and then I created uh, the composites of the SPEI values. So um, again, it's not too well simulated, and this is probably linked to the... Um, precipitation, well, the high evapotranspiration values, which is impacting the precipitation. Um, so, um, but it is pattern, um, let me just check. Um, so I think um, the third pattern um, is 
almost like an inverse of, um, of the observed. Um, and, but looking at specific regions, it's not, some regions are uh, simulated better than others. Um, so, yeah, so these are the El Nino patterns, and then going on to the La Nina patterns. Um, again, it's, it's getting some regions better than others. Um, and uh, again, the, the last pattern, again, seems to almost be an inverse of the observed. Um, so that is the La Nina pattern. So the results aren't too great yet. Um, so just to conclude that Speedy is generally simulating a warm bias over majority of Southern Africa, and this is leading to higher evapotranspiration um, values. And that seems to be limiting the efficiency in simulating the moisture balance and the SPEI values. Um, so the correlations are quite weak for the um, SPI of the different ENSO patterns. Um, um, so I didn't actually have time to look at the uh, geopotential height or the pressure fields yet. Um, so that'll be the next step to um, see what teleconnections aren't being um, simulated properly. And then um, to possibly look at ways of improving the performance of Speedy before I can move on to the sensitivity tests and actually imposing the SSD anomalies for my research. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs>